finally have our first blockbuster trade of the NBA trade deadline. Yes, that's right, folks. What is going on, y'all? Five Sports Talk back at it with another video, of course, talking some NBA. And I told you guys the NBA trade deadline is coming up. You're going to want to stay tuned, locked in right here. So make sure you guys are subscribed and turned on your post notifications because I'm going to be bringing you guys all the latest analysis on all the big trades that happen. And the biggest one so far has been this trade between the Cavs and the Lakers. Yes, that's right. So the Cavaliers and the Lakers decide to make a deal. And this deal is a significant one because it does involve one Isaiah Thomas going now to the Lakers. So the official deal is Isaiah Thomas and Channing Fry are going to the Lakers and the Cavaliers in exchange will receive Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance. Oh, and a first round pick is also going to the Lakers from the Cleveland side. But it is not the Nets first round pick. It is the Cavaliers own first round pick for 2018. So what does this trade mean for both sides? Why did the Cavs do it? Why did the Lakers do it? And who wins this trade? And all of that good stuff. I'm going to talk about that right now. Now, I actually start from the Lakers side of things. Now, of course, why did the Lakers make this trade? Well, the biggest thing with the Lakers is you have to know ever since Magic Johnson and Rob Palinka took over management uh, responsibilities is that they uh, were adamant in saying that they want to have a big free agent come to LA, okay? Whether that's in 2018, 2019, they want to have a free agent come to LA. And what do you need when you have when you want to go after a free agent? You need cap space, folks. And so the Lakers have been trying to move salary cap and they've been trying to create that cap space for not just 2018, but also 2019. And this deal does just that for the Lakers because now they get Jordan Clarkson salary off the books. Clarkson, if you guys remember, signed a four-year $50 million deal a couple of years ago. And now he's got two years left on his deal at about 12 and 13 million. So that comes off the books. Then you have Larry Nance. He was on his rookie deal. So really, he might have been a throw in, but he is a nice throw in. I like Larry Nance. And so you have him in there, maybe to match salaries and whatnot. But basically, it was Clarkson's sort of contract that they needed to get off the books. So now you have space for two. Max slot free agents in 2018 and 2019. Not to mention the fact that if you decide to extend Julius Randle, you can do that as well, okay? So that was the main goal behind this trade for the Lakers. And of course, they didn't just want that. They were able to get a first round pick because the players that they were coming back onto their teams with Isaiah Thomas and Channing Fry. I mean, let's think about it. Channing Fry is just a throw in, okay? Channing Fry at this point is washed up. Nobody wants Channing Fry, but he does add some shooting and some decent bench depth uh, at, at center and power forward, okay? Uh, but for the most part, he is basically a throw in. And then you have Isaiah Thomas, the main component of this trade. Now, IT and how he fits in this team, a little interesting to me, okay? Because. Like I said, do you start him or do you bring him off the bench, okay? But he is an expiring contract, so both of these guys are expiring contracts. So just because you traded for him, Laker fans, does not mean he's staying on the Lakers, okay? Remember, the cap space is the most important thing, so this could just be a six-month rental. So I wouldn't worry too much. Now, but for the rest of the season, though... What's going to happen with IT? Are they going to start him? Are they going to bring him off the bench? My guess is I think he starts until Lonzo's out. And then when Lonzo comes back in, they might bring him off the bench. Or they might start him at the two. I'm not so sure about that, but I could see it happening. I wouldn't. I'd bring IT off the bench. You have a nice rotation with uh, Josh Hart playing well now at the two. And you've got KCP. You've got Ingram. You've got Randall. You've got Lopez. I say if Lonzo, when, once Lonzo's back... Bring IT off the bench for that bench scoring, but we'll see what happens there. But like I said, that's basically it from the Lakers side of things. But that first round pick was also key as well because they didn't have a first round pick in 2018. But basically, salary cap space for two max free agents for next year and the year after. And next year, you already know Paul George, those rumors have been going on and on. And then 2019, you have guys like Jimmy Butler, guys like that out there. So... Uh, who knows what's going to happen, but there are some big name free agents out there, okay? So I can see what the Lakers are trying to do, though I'm not necessarily sure they're going to pull off any of those guys, but the fact that they have the salary cap space to do it does mean something. Let's look at this trade from the Cleveland Cavaliers side of things. So they acquired Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance. First and foremost, can I just say, 
it's nice to finally get somebody that's, um, you know, on the other side of 30 and not, you know, the over the hill side of 30 because damn the Cavaliers needed to get younger my god this team is old folks I am telling you this team is old as hell and the fact that they were able to get two 25 year olds in Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance it's going to add some athleticism it's going to add some youth to this team and that is much needed okay now first and foremost like I said they were able to send out IT because like I said he's been playing absolutely horrible and I didn't think they could trade IT because I thought nobody would want him but the best part of Isaiah Thomas at this point is his damn contract and it's not his play folks that expiring contract that means something to teams like I said the Lakers who are looking to create cap space so that expiring contract helped them out and they were able to move IT and I'm happy about that. Now, with Jordan Clarkson, I like Jordan Clarkson, folks. I'm not so sure I would have given up on Jordan Clarkson this quick. I mean, 14 points per game just off the bench this year. He's been pretty solid. So, I like Jordan Clarkson. He can start for this team at the point or at the two. And now you have Larry Nance. He's basically insurance for Kevin Love until Kevin Love comes back. But damn, he's a nice insurance piece. But you can start him right now. And then when Kevin Love comes back, you can bring him off the bench. Now, I know these guys are extended past this year. But here's the thing. The whole, you know, what happens if LeBron leaves? You've got some pieces now to build around. You can build around Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance. I like these guys. I like Jordan Clarkson a lot, folks. Like I said, so... Uh, if it wasn't for Lonzo Ball, Jordan Clarkson would be starting in L.A. We all know that. So I like these pieces for the Lakers. And now that you get to add some athleticism and youth to this team, hopefully it will spark something. Like I said, Jordan Clarkson will add some shooting. He'll add some you know, slashing to the basket. Just bottom line scoring to this team. He's taller than IT. So you have that. He, he won't be a defensive liability in that sense. And like I said, I like Larry Nance. I think he's a good athletic power forward. So now you can kind of see the makeup of this team changing. Uh, you know, LeBron doesn't have to play as much point. You've got Clarkson there. You've got LeBron there. You've got Larry Nance there. Once Kevin Love comes back, let's see what happens. But overall, it couldn't get any worse, okay? So the Cavaliers did not get worse from the seal because Isaiah Thomas was playing god-awful. And Channing Fry, like I say, is just a throw-in. So they got better from this deal, I believe, like I said, for sure in the, in the short term because of, of Larry Nance with Isaiah, uh, Kevin Love being out. So let's see what happens, but I like it. I like this trade. I know they had to give up a first round pick, but damn it, at least it was a Nets, Nets pick, okay? They were able to trade Isaiah Thomas and get some good players in return without giving up the Nets pick. I think that's a win-win uh, for the Cavaliers. I don't know who pulled off this trade. If it was GM Kobe Altman, you know, kudos to him. Hopefully this trade um, is able to sort of propel the Cavs to where they need to go because like I said that locker room was becoming cancerous it was becoming absolutely horrendous in terms of team chemistry and they needed to get IT out of there because all he was doing was deflecting blame the entire time so overall uh, I think it was a solid trade for the Cavaliers I think now even if LeBron leaves you can maybe build around Clarkson and Nance you still have the Nets pick let's see what happens maybe there's more deals on the horizon this is just what I've known so far but I like this deal for the Cleveland Cavaliers. That first-round pick is protected, folks. It's not just a straight first-round pick that you're getting. So it, it does have protections on it. So a win for the Cleveland Cavaliers on this one. Who wins this trade? Well, you know what, folks? I want to pick a side. But again, this seems like another win-win type of deal. Though, I am going to say I am more on the Cavs side in this deal. Just because, like I said... You can open up that salary cap space in 2018 and 2019, but there is no guarantee you land any of those big free agents for the Lakers, okay? So if they don't end up landing anybody, you just gave up on Jordan Clarkson, 25-year-olds, 25-year-old, you gave up on Larry Nance, 25-year-old. So these are young, promising players that you gave up on for salary cap. So let's see what happens there, but I like this trade for the Cavaliers a little bit more than I like it. For the Lakers, the Lakers weren't able to even get the Nets pick. They weren't able to get the Cavaliers 2018 first round pick without protections. That has protections on it. So let's see what happens. But I like this trade a little bit more for the Cleveland Cavaliers. I like Jordan Clarkson. I like Larry Nance. I don't like Isaiah Thomas. So there you have it, folks. But 
like I said, if the Lakers are able to uh, land somebody with that 2018-2019 salary cap space, then it's a win for everybody. So there you have it, folks. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below if you guys agree, disagree. Make sure you guys subscribe. Stay tuned to the channel. Hit me up on my social media link down below for that.